So in my last video, somebody asked me if I was a Christian. I would ask them, are you a warmongering Democrat? Are you a member of the warmongering Democrat Party? Do you value human life? Where are you as a Democrat? All you want is war. You just want to kill people. You're killing Ukrainians by the thousands. Is this what you want? Is this what you want as a Democrat? And a neocon Republican. This was the most explicit display I could find today. I want to bring home the reality of war to the warmongering Democrats. They wanted this war. Joe Biden wanted this war. Remember, Trump never got us in a war. I hope that uh, as a warmongering Democrat, you're watching people die now. I hope you're happy. I'm sorry, I'll get off my box. I'm gonna play the entirety of this video. Every explosion is a human life. And the Russians aren't putting this out as propaganda, they're putting this out to show NATO. This is the reality of war. This is what Democrats do. This is what the evil of the Democrat party is. They don't care that they're killing people in Ukraine by the hundreds. I'll shut up. Let me get off my box. It just infuriates me that our government and Germany and the European nation, European Union, excuse me, they're a part of this massacre that's taking place. This, this is Russian artillery. It's not like in the old days during World War II where you just fire, fire, fire rounds. These are precision rounds going in with drones marking their targets. 6,500 a day killing people. The war needs to end. But Joe Biden wants it, Joe Bidenopolis, he wants the war to continue. The Democrats want the war to continue. The European Union, especially the warmongering Germans, uh, their Green Party, they want the war to continue. That's it. All right, so let's get over and get off my angry train. Holy shit. Somebody asked me, they said, man, are you tainting your soul with all of this stuff? And I'm, yeah, I guess I am. I guess I am. I can't stand watching the world burn like this under the warmongering Democrats. It's just, uh, it gets to be, uh, I get emotional, you know. There needs to be a peace treaty. This thing needs to end. I mean, I understand here in the United States, you think it's not going to affect you. It's going to come back to haunt you. Well, it's coming back. And we're going to talk about that in today's video. Watching the world burn. All right, so <clears throat> let's get into the video of the day. I hope that affected you as emotionally as it did me. All right, so let's just go through the... Um, by the way, the, uh, the war, um, it's definitely heated up in East, East Ukraine. Um, looks like Russia is finally, uh, and everybody said it's going to be February 24th. I'm not seeing that. Uh, it looks to me like Russia has brought up some of the uh, troops that it's called up. Uh, and so the fighting in East Ukraine is uh, getting, um, getting hot now because uh, there are thousands of, of, of additional Russian troops uh, that have mo been moved to the front. And uh, now is this a push uh, to, to roll through the Eastern Front? No, because they're attacking all along the front. Um, but they are now killing, uh, according to uh, reports that I've seen, they're now killing not just uh, hundreds of Ukrainians a day. I, I think that we are getting in, well, not by day, but I mean, we're getting into the thousands of Ukrainians that are dying uh, as a result of uh, NATO uh, deciding that they wanted to poke the bear 
and uh, and start a war with Russia. I, I you know, I, I wish the Ukrainians would just make a peace treaty with Russia and then just pour right across into Europe. Because they were the ones that, that funded this war and, 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 and basically take out everything in Europe, uh, Germany especially. They, they, they've gotten into the war after World War II. After what they did, they destroyed Europe once before, well, destroyed Europe twice. Now they're on a mission to destroy Europe a third time. I, you know, I, I wouldn't blame the Russians as they just went in there and just exterminated the doggone Germans. Well, I, I, they're not the German people. There's a lot of good German people, but their government. Their government needs to go. If you're a German citizen, you need to vote out your government. That Green Party is nothing but a warmongering party sending leopard tanks to Ukraine after what Germany did in World War II? Killing 25 million? <sighs> all right, so I'm, I'm on my box today. I tell you what. Um, all right, so uh, we know of uh, 100 Ukrainians that are dead in uh Kursne, Liman area. Um, there were uh, 20, uh, the, the Russians claim that they destroyed uh, 20 self-propelled uh, howitzers in the uh, Kursan area. Uh, so that's, uh, and of course you got to consider that there were crews associated with that. Uh, Ukraine's claiming that they killed, uh, when I think I put this number up yesterday, uh, 1,030 dead Russians uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, I have seen nothing to confirm that, um, uh, coming out of Russia anyway, because I do watch the Russian television. Um, oh, this was an interesting report today. Uh, it was by the Duran, and uh, they were going on about Sweden. I, I, you know, I always thought, you know, the Swedish are very peaceful people. I always thought their 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 country was uh, uh, very safe, uh, probably a wonderful place to visit. I, that's not true. I mean, they, they, they opened up their borders uh, because of the globalist and uh, they're, they're reporting that it's become <laughs> gangster land. That's what they call it. Gangster land. Uh, Cause they, there's fighting on the streets. Uh, 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 teenagers shooting at each other. It's, uh, it's it, the uncontrolled immigration uh, like we have here in the United States. Uh, just, just open this up and that uh, Germany and Sweden are now officially in recession because of the, um, the sanctions. Um, uh, oh yeah, this is uh, this is terrible news. Uh, like watching the world burn. That's why I got to give you your daily dose of as the Canadian prepper says, doom and gloom. Um, we got nine thousand dead from the earthquake. Uh, that's seven point four uh, Richter scale in Turkey. Um, so it was. Um, I think the figure is seven thousand confirmed dead in Turkey, and two thousand in Syria. Now while Turkey is getting um, aid from Russia. Uh, I haven't seen any, I swear I have not seen any confirmation of aid coming from the West to Turkey. I would like to think there is, but you know, if you've got something, leave a comment below. Maybe, uh, maybe some of the European nations are sending aid to Turkey. They are a NATO member, but I, from, from what I can tell, Syria is getting nothing. So, uh, they, these pe poor people are suffering immensely. Uh, and by the way, I, I, as I said yesterday, be very careful about what charities you give to. It'll probably just go into some politician's pocket in Washington, D.C. Um, this, uh, this is a staggering number. Uh, there are reportedly, um, and by the way, I, 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 all I can do is just study the fringes, man. Do you think that I can confirm these numbers? Do you think I have, you know, troops of people over in Ukraine or Russia? And, you know, all you can do is just kind of surf around and, and try to get, you know, some good information because our media is so censored, as you know now. Um, but uh, supposedly, okay, uh, there are 10,000 Ukrainians uh, left fighting in Bakhmut. Uh, now, Bakhmut, I told you yesterday that it's one third of the way surrounded. Uh, uh, it, it turns out today the Russians have made uh, even more progress uh, on the outskirts, not in Bakhmut that I saw anything today. Uh, but they're definitely closing off the, uh, ret uh, the ability of the Ukrainians to retreat out of Bakhmut. So basically what you're going to have uh, ultimately uh, in this situation within the next couple of days is um, 10,000 Ukrainians can either surrender or die. That's it. That's their only choice because they're going to run out of ammo. They're going to run out of food. Uh, it's just like uh, during the uh, Civil War when uh, uh, the Union surrounded uh, Vicksburg down in, um, um, uh, gosh dang, New Orleans, you know, around that area. 
Um, so yeah, the, the, the Bach mode is, is, is done um, within the next week, I would say. Uh, so 10,000 Ukrainians. And, and the disturbing part about this is to tell you, so everybody says, oh yeah, oh, do you hate Ukrainians? No, I hate their government. And so in my opinion, their command is either, they're, they're so corrupt or stupid that they've basically written off these 10,000 Ukrainians. They could have withdrawn them. They could have moved them back to a, a, a more attainable position. No, they've left them there, man, to die or surrender. Hopefully they'll surrender. I do think the Trump Russians would treat them okay if they surrendered. But uh, who knows? They, they, these people have been sold a bill of goods. They might just fight to the last Ukrainian. And that seems what NATO wants to do. They want Ukraine to fight to the last Ukrainian for NATO. Um, so the Russian cauldron is closing on Bakhmut. Um, so, and I already said the Russian leadership considers them expendable, which I think is disgusting. Um, uh, okay, yeah, and b by the way, the numbers coming out of Russia, because, uh, you know, it's hard to get any numbers th that mean anything in the Western press. Uh, but they, uh, Russia did report that, that 6,500 uh, Ukrainians died in January according to Sergei, uh, which is a, a military leader in Russia. Uh, getting on to other news, uh, just wanted to report on this. Carrie Lake um, came out, uh, this was interesting news today, uh, and she says if her case, because she's, she's in the, with the appeals court right now, if her appeals court case fails, of course she's going to appeal that to the Supreme Court, I guess the uh, Arizona Supreme Court, and then all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. We'll see how all this goes, and that's her main focus right now. But if... Uh, all of these uh, uh, efforts failed. Um, she's going to run for the Senate. Man, I tell you, she'd make a great senator, I think. Uh, I, I would love to see that. Um, so recall. And the other thing I wanted to point out, it's not just the, uh, the, the court cases that are going through for, for the shenanigans that took place in Maricopa County. Um, she's also uh, got, uh, there's two organizations right now that are... Um, doing, uh, getting sick, well, they're not getting signatures yet. You can't get signatures until after six months, but they are organizing efforts to get signatures for a recall of Kate, of uh, Hobbs, that uh, charlatan that's in the uh, uh, gubernatorial seat of Arizona. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, this is another uh, interesting uh, factoid. Uh, Britain is expanding their training of Ukrainians. Uh, they, they've got 10,000 right now that they're training in uh, Great Britain. Uh, which is kind of ironic. I think that's the size of the whole British military. <laughs> they're, training, they're training more Ukrainians than they have British uh, in, in uniform. But, I, you know, I'm just being sarcastic. Uh, and so now they've increased that to 20,000 by, by year end. I don't think that's going to do no damn good. The, the, but the other thing is they are training them to fly F-16. So maybe, I guess, Britain, uh, their uh, delusional government thinks that the war is going to last another year. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, we shall see see we shall see um, let's see uh, there were reports of uh, Ukrainians that are being uh, um, conscripted uh, from oh, by the way I, there's lots of videos of Ukrainians being forced into uh, buses to be sent to the front line with no military experience whatsoever uh, and so what the reports are now is that they're damaging equipment <laughs> <laughs> to try to be keep to keep from being set to the front line. I, that's what I'd do, man. I tell you what, I'd be pulling them spark plugs out of the bus uh, that's trying to take me to the front lines uh, in hopes that, that you know maybe I won't ever get there before the war's over. Because uh, uh, you know if, if if I'm a 16 year old, I don't want to die for a bunch of corrupt politicians in Kiev. Um, so let's see. Uh, Russia acknowledged the need to advance. Oh, yeah. And what this is what I talked about yesterday was uh, Russia. And then I told you this was going to happen. I told you this was going to happen, that Russia has acknowledged the need to advance the front line by 150 kilometers because of the new weapon systems that NATO is sending to um, Ukraine. Uh, because, like I said, they, they want to make sure that uh, the weapon systems that are located in Ukraine, uh, if and when the war ever ends, uh, if, if and when the West comes to its senses, if and when the warmongering Democrats will allow a peace treaty to be negotiated, Russia is going to make sure that, that the lines are pushed back far enough that uh, um, the uh, Ukrainian na Nazis can no longer uh, uh, bomb the uh, Donbass region, uh, where uh, a lot of Russian-speaking people seem to want to be part of the Russian Federation. So let's let's hope that's the case. I'm not over there, I couldn't tell you. 
Ah, uh, this is another piece of news. I thought this was very, very interesting. The uh, Greater Idaho Movement. Have you heard of that? Uh, this is Oregon, and uh, there's a major battle taking place there. I, because uh, all of the rural uh, Oregonians, uh, uh, they just they they don't want anything to do with Portland. I mean, you know, you have to remember that the, the uh, Oregon is a leftist stronghold. I mean, think about the member the riots that took place in Portland. They've got those. Um, those uh, bail laws that you know allow a, a criminal to just go back right back out on the street and everything uh, they you know they they voted to secede uh, but 30 30 percent of the counties now have voted to secede from from Oregon now this is a this is a big deal because you say well that's that's impossible I mean because this hasn't happened since the 19 well it might have 19 or 1800s i can't remember the last time well i mean the civil war you remember that we had virginia and that broke up into virginia and west virginia so i guess that might have been the last time that we restructured the states um and you might say well th that's stupid how can they have any traction well idaho uh, has a um, a motion in their state legislature saying yeah yeah we want it we want the territory from uh, oregon and these leftist lunatics in Oregon are saying, you know what, uh, we don't we don't need that portion of our state. So it looks like they might move it through. So then, what would happen with our constitutional system is this would go before the U.S. Congress, and uh, we'll see. I mean, I I think this thing's got traction. I, I I I remember back when I heard about it months ago, and I thought, man, this is it's kind of like a convention of the states not going to happen too many democrat states all the republican states i think would vote for a convention of the states we've got too many democrats uh, warmongering democrats let's just put it that way um so uh oh yeah this was this was huge uh, uh redacted i uh, definitely watched their video today holy shit um there's a there's a whole new uh, slew of evidence that uh that the United States uh, planted those explosives on the Nord Stream pipelines uh, three months before we blew them up. Uh, they had remote controls on those things so that we wouldn't be in the area. Um, and so, uh, and, and, and this happened, and Russia actually pointed this out because these naval exercises were conducted around that time, three months prior to the pipelines being blown up. And of course, we all have to go back to the video of Joe Biden saying, if Russia invades Ukraine, we're going to take care of the Nord Stream pipelines. And he just unequivocally said that. And I guess the United States did. So the evidence of the truth will set you free. The truth always comes out. So it looks like the United States has committed the biggest act of eco-terrorism in the history of the world, according to reports today. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, I, I, I can't say it's proven. I'm just telling you what's being reported. Um, Oh, yeah. The, uh, and then the last thing that I wanted to report on today was that the narrative that the Chinese balloons flew over the United States under the Trump administration is definitely breaking down. Even Mattis, who doesn't like Trump. <laughs> In fact, I'd say there's no love lost between Trump and General Mattis. Mattis was a hero of mine, by the way. I, 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 what he did to Trump, I, I, I don't like the guy. All right, so let's get into the one thing that I can do uh, besides report on uh, world news and, and, and bitch about the warmongering Democrats and everything uh, that has disturbed me today. So today I had a carpenter come in and uh, he installed. This is door armor, the ultimate door security. Okay. And I'm just going to read to you the, their propaganda on the, it's made in the USA. Uh, there, well, this is a, I don't know what the lifetime $500 guarantee. I'm not sure what that means. Police tested, easy to install, patented. Door armor max combo kit, white. Reinforces all key points on your door. Uh, George jam shield, 46 inch steel plate, reinforces the door jam. Patented design requires no trim removal or alteration. Mini door shields uh, help prevent the door from splitting. Install without removing locks. Uh, Hinge shields help secure hinges. Screws alone are not enough. Uh, alarms work, and then of course they do point this out. And you know what? This is this is definitely true. Uh, alarms, you know, you can put all the security alarms you want, but they only work after the intruders are inside. So what am I doing with securing my house? Okay, uh, and I kind of want you to think about these things because my channel is not just about world events or the war or everything else. I'm trying to help you. 
because uh, we're going to we're getting in some troubled times and these are things that you need to think about so what good is an alarm if the intruder comes right through your window in two seconds are you going to be able to get to your gun especially if you got kids and you got locks on your guns you think you're going to get to those guns in time to unlock them uh, chamber around and hit the burglar before they uh, they, they get to you uh, I doubt it very seriously. So what you're trying to do with, with fortifications like this, like the door armor, okay, that I'm talking about right here, is you're trying to buy yourself time. Okay, so if somebody's breaking in, uh, yeah, okay, they're going to they're gonna hammer that door and they're going to think, uh, you know, well, especially in the movies, you know, where they kick it with their foot, they probably break their leg on my front door now because it's a solid steel front door. But I'm going to tell you, so, so what you want is, you know, when that pounding hit, I'm, I'm sure I would wake up because, you know, I don't, I don't have noise makers in my house or anything. I mean, I would wake up and go, what the hell was that? And then they'd pound again. Boom. Okay, now, now I'm getting up and I'm going, where's my gun? Where's my gun? Where's my, where's my knife? You know, where's my baseball bat? Whatever, whatever sort of protection you got. Uh, you know, uh, you know, so that's, that's what you want is you want your house in a situation where it takes the intruders as long as possible to get into your house. Uh, you can't just have them, I mean, if they could just kick in the front door, just boom, you're done. Well, guess what? You're dead. I don't care if you got 16,000 guns in the house, especially if they're under lock and key or in a safe somewhere, which is a, what everybody says that you need to do, especially if you got kids, you have to. I mean, you know, but, you know, I, I would just say put them up in a place where they can't reach them, you know, but kids can be pretty imaginative about getting to stuff. So anyway, it just goes on. I'll read the last of the propaganda. Uh, an alarm system is your last line of defense. Door armor is the first. Then that's what I was talking about. So this is your first line of defense. Always have layers of defense, and and even in, you know, in the military, you know, you gotta have layers of defense. Uh, so you know, so this this is another layer of defense for my house. Um, economical security for investment properties. Uh, permanently secure vacant and occupied property. Very good uh, point. Uh, the part of your door left unprotected will break when kicked, and then and that's another point. So. Anyway, I, so I just had this installed today. Um, now I might, I'll get into the alarm system. I'll be installing that. I'm going to have outdoor cameras here uh, eventually. Uh, you say, well, man, you, you know, you, you're definitely into your security. <laughs> well, I think we're heading for some really bad times. And you better be thinking about things like this. Uh, it, it doesn't take all that much effort. I just found a good carpenter. Uh, I could have done it myself. Um, but I, you know, Sometimes you get what you pay for, you know, I, I wanted this guy to come in and I knew he would do it right and he did a great job. So now I'm, I feel a lot more secure knowing that my front door just can't be kicked in by somebody's foot. So let's say hi to the boo dog. Hi boo. Hi boo. I got him for um, two more days. So we'll, we'll have two more videos with the boo dog and then my ex-wife will take him back. I'll tell you what, I, I just love hanging out with him. It's the only thing I want to do. All right, peace out. I might uh, come up with another video today. I doubt it. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, emotional for me making these videos. Uh, I'm trying to educate you on what the world is and what's going on. Um, silver right now is still a great price at SD Bullion. If you want to buy it, uh, it only went up maybe 14 cents today. Uh, uh, and I noticed they've got the, uh, the Philharmonics back in stock. Um, the, um, so you might want to consider buying a, a nice little 25 sleeve. Probably cost you about $670 or so. Um, you know, I can't emphasize it. Oh, and that was another piece of news today was Bank America. Their XO came out and said that, um, that their, the bank may fail. Guy came out and said it. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. I mean, if you're running a business and you come out and say, you know what, we're, we're having difficulty as a bank, a huge bank, uh, I would have thought it'd be Wells Fargo myself. You know, you know, I hate Wells Fargo, but I mean, Bank of America, I mean, it, I, and I appreciate the guy's honesty, you know, don't you think? I mean, I, he's coming out and he's saying, you know, things aren't looking good for, for the banking industry. I hope you're prepared. You know, if you get a bail in, you know, your money's gone, right? You better have some cash. You better get you some cash at home. Uh, or silver, or gold, or platinum, whatever. Peace out, stay free, good.
good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor the Sanctimonious.